This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I wish I could afford New York rent. And also, I would like it to be 1920s New York, so I don't have to spend as much money. Anyways, Lonesome is a semi-silent romantic comedy from 1928, directed by Paul Fejos, which takes place in 1920s New York, when rent was cheap and finding love was as easy as going outside, or something like that. The movie follows a day in the lives of Jim and Mary, two workaday citizens who separately choose to escape the loneliness of their lives by heading to a beachside carnival. We see them meet and fall in love, with a good amount of the film spent on their first date at the carnival and on the beach as well as the obstacles that get in their way as night falls. The story is pretty basic, which is fine for a movie which came out so early in film's history, but can be a bit droll and predictable for modern viewers. It's pretty much your basic setup for a rom-com. There's a boy, there's a girl, they meet, they laugh, they love, they lose, they win. The movie doesn't stray too far from that formula, though it does spend a good amount of time setting up Jim and Mary as characters, going through their respective mornings and work days up until they first meet each other, which is where the more romantic side of things comes into play. Their development is a bit simplified, and we don't see them so much as fleshed out characters, but more like smaller pieces of the greater story. The overall plot pacing is a bit slow, with scenes stretched out a bit long after their point has gotten across, but it's not too noticeable when the overall energy of scenes becomes so frantic that you need that extra time to get your bearings straight. But beyond the simple characters and stretched plot and story, the movie is notable more for its experimental effects works. Initially, the effects are more optical, blending different shots and perspectives of events to emphasize the hustle and bustle of the workplace. But later in the film, color tinting is employed, from full frames to hand-painted elements. It's a beautiful sight to see, adding to the film's visuals in a way which a monochromatic color scheme couldn't, or at least not without struggling. The most impressive of the film's experimentation is by far the use of synchronous sound, including early examples of synchronous dialogue. Admittedly, given the weaknesses of the rest of the film, this pretty much is all that Lonesome is worth watching for. The story isn't too bad, but it's been done better in other films. Even the special effects of Lonesome aren't all that stellar compared to, say, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans, which came out only a year prior. But still, I think that even if it's not as technically or narratively impressive as its contemporaries, the movie is still able to hold its own as a worthwhile piece of entertainment, though the gimmicks do help it to stand out a bit. Lonesome, Paul Feos, 1928, three and a half stars. I'd say to give it a watch for a taste of early silent experimentation. That's it for the review. If you liked it, feel free to leave a like. If you didn't, then leave a comment. If you want more reviews, then subscribe to the channel. This movie reminded me that I haven't been to a beach in years, even before getting stuck in here. Gotta remember to pay a visit if I ever get out.